Hey, I'm RC and welcome to the episode 7 about creating a game in HTML5. So if you haven't watched the last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I will be doing is adding um, color to our game. So right now, um, the player and the enemies are just letters, but I will turn them into um, colorful rectangle like you'll be able to see and um, there's also another bunch of stuff that we will do to just improve the game in general. Okay so what we will do is that we will want to draw the player as um, a green rectangle and the enemies as a red rectangle. Um, so right now we have a function called draw entity that is used both by the player and the enemies. Um, what we will do is that we will split this function into two parts. There are many ways to do it. This is the most simple one and so I'll show it and don't worry everything will become clean eventually. Um, so for those who are more advanced um, it might seem this is a weird move, but don't worry, it will make sense later on. Um, so we'll have one function called draw player and one function called draw enemy. So in the update entity, which is only used by the enemies at this point, I will simply um, change the draw entity for draw enemy. And in the update loop right here, when we um, draw the player, we will change it for draw player. Okay, so the next step would be to change the um, function we have created. So right there, um, when we will do a fill text, we will change the fill style for green. So um, the rectangle we will write is green and here we will change it for red. Now there's a little problem with this. Um, you need to be very careful when you change the fill, si uh, fill style because um, it stays um, on. So by default it's black, then we set it to green and see what happens. We draw the player, we set the style to green and then we draw the HP bar, well the how many HP he has. So this text right there will be green if we leave it that way. So what we need to do is to put a put the um, fill style back to black. So um, this is a way to do it, it's really simple. Another way to do it is to say A, save the current settings and then restore the settings. This is another way to do it. I could simply say A fill style becomes to black after or you use that, so save and then restore. So um, normally it's better to use save and restore, something like that. So instead of fill text, it will be fill rec. And then we need to specify the X, Y, width, and height. Now this is a bit tricky. Um, we could say that the enemies are, um, let's say, 30 by 30. Now we have a little problem because normally the the X and Y of a, of something is in the middle of that enemy. But right now, the way we are um, writing it, it will be the top left corner that will be in the X and Y. So um, a little trick is to remove 15 from the X and Y to center um, the whole thing. Oh, this is actually for the player. Player, I was th thinking maybe 20, 20. So this will become 10 and 10. And for the enemies, it will be um, a bit bigger something like this. Okay, so now let's just check how it looks. So as you can see, we have a um, green rectangle and red rectangles for the enemies. Now one thing that is a bit wrong with our system right now is the collision system. If you remember correctly, um, the system we used back then is testing the collision between um, the enemy and the player and if the distance was uh, less than 30, we would assume that they were colliding. But this is no longer true because um, they are rectangles. So what we need to do is to create a new function that will test the collision between two rectangles. Okay, so this is the function that will test the collision between two rectangles. You don't really need to understand um, how it works exactly. You just need to understand how to use it. Um, so it takes two parameters, the first rectangle and the second rectangle. Um, what a rectangle is, is something with a X, a Y, a width, and an height. And this will return true if they are colliding or false if they are not colliding. So now what we will do is that we will update our function test collision entities that takes two parameters, the first, the first entity and the second entity. So instead of calculating the distance and returning if it's less than 30, what we will do is that we will create the rectangle one, which needs to have an X, it needs to have a Y, it needs to have a width, and it needs to have a height. 
Um, so the first one will be the player, I think. I don't know. Um, 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 um. Yeah, test collision, the first parameter is always the player and then it's the enemy. So here we will put the NTT1x minus 10 because the width, um, it's half the width of the player, then minus 10, so it's centered, then it's the width, oops, which is 20, and then the height, which is 20. Okay, there we are. And then we create the second rectangle, exactly the same thing, but with um, entity 2, and it's 15. Something like that. And then we will simply return the collision between the rectangles. There we are. So yeah, as you can see, this system works, but it's kind of annoying because we need to hard code the value 15 and 30. And another thing is, um, what if we wanted to have enemies with different height and different width? Then our system will not work. So we'll do a little change. Um, so instead of hard coding 30 here, when we create an enemy, we will specify its um, height and its um, width. So right there, we'll add a new parameter that will be the width and a new parameter that will be the height. And those will be put in um, here as the parameters. Those are attributes, by the way, and those are the parameters. So when we create an enemy, we will add here um, values, for example, 30, 30. This one could be 20, 20, and this one could be 30, 10, let's say, or even 40, 10. And here, instead of hard coding 10 and 20, uh, yeah, for the player, we'll also need to do that. So here, the player, whoops, we will put a width of 20 and a height of 20. So everywhere where we hard coded the 10, we can simply put um, width divided by 2 to center um, the whole thing, height divided by 2, the um, width and then the height. And then we simply copy paste. Um, there we go. And right here we will do exactly the same thing. So width divided by two, height divided by two, height, width, and we can copy this and copy this here. Now, another thing is, um, it would also be great to have enemies of different colors. So let's add a parameter that will tell what color they are. So let's just assume that they are always red for now. So color red and this one color green. And by doing this, um, instead of R coding A, it's green, we can simply put its color. And right here, we can also put a its color. And as you can see, those two functions are now exactly the same. So there's no point in having two separated functions. So we can go back and rename this draw entity and put this here and put this there. Okay, so this is how it looks. So we got our green rectangle for the player and we got our three enemies with different shapes. Um, so that will be pretty much it about um, this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to check out the next episode by clicking the annotation on the screen. So what I got planned is fixing couple um, issues with the game. Um, so first we can go out of bounds. So obviously this should not be the case. And um, Right now the game is kind of easy, so what I'm planning to do is to spawn more enemy as the time goes. So thanks again for watching and see ya!